That would be great. Oh, why? Let's go. That felt good. Yeah, and uh, again, they needed the lockdown. This does put a lot of pressure. We have technology. Setting up Welcome quite the bout between Smart Omega and TNC in a best of three. Once more, playoff spot up for grabs for the Barangay. Leo and Jose Ingen here bringing you the action. I gotta say, Woo. I don't think it's just mass copium that the panel, the analysts, and we here on desk say, TNC, they drafted quite the hell out of that bout. Yeah, I mean, looking at the lineup of TNC, you know they have a lot of engaged, they have a lot of catch, but I do agree with what uh, Brigida and Renmar was saying that Heads has to be the primary roamer this time, has to be the zoner, the frontliner, to activate Escalera's counter implosion place. As an EXP laner. As an EXP laner. He has to cross the threshold and live in Andoryu's jungle. Again, here's a response. Okay, who got the purple buff, but Kaysen goes in. Is he gonna fall down though? Chakra Kaysen! with the ring of punishment still survives. Here comes Escalera with a sacred hammer just to save Kazen. The overaggression of TNC wasn't punished Flicker! and Heads flickers in. Wants to go for Oki, draws the first blood and he will fall down. But Heads as well. You know what? On an economic scale, if you think about it, an EXP slash roamer given his life to take down the mid laner, which is a secondary core. That's a good deal for TNC. Again, they can keep pushing the advantage now. Oh, Big J! Okay. Escalera forced to use the flicker there, trying to get Jome. But Jome remains unbothered, still safe. And I do agree, that was a worth it trade for TNC. Heads, ideally, you know Heads is going to just keep dying, diving, dying, and diving. But Ugir, on the other hand, you can't let that Zask die, especially with the recent adjustments for Zask. You know what, Ian? I'm going to say it now. As early as two minutes, something tells me Smart Omega pulled a Mega Man, mm. a Rock Man for her Japanese friends. <laughs> they took what they learned from Team Liquid last night, yeah. and they're using it now. Look at the aggression. Uh, they're on the receiving end of that same thing from TNC. Okay, Chuck, no. Look at that! We'll have to walk away now. TNC, this is a different Phoenix army. I mean, we, we're used to seeing them dominate the early game, but not up against Omega, who also is known for having a strong start. I mean, in terms of average game duration, they're both a tied. Okay, heads. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here comes a kick, but no follow-up damage. Here comes Endoryu, though. Let's see. Okay, commit so Wiggy Shadow Kill. Escalera just waiting for the perfect opportunity, but here comes Ryota! Ah. Flicker in with a wild charge! Gonna punish heads there! Dominator's descent as well, as Ryota blocks Lancey's uh, entry. Chaknu running for Lancey! The birthday boy survives! And now the counter-attack for the Phoenix Army! Here comes the implosion! <laughs> Plus Kozen activated right away with the Blazing Duet, going right after Ukir. Ukir's gonna uh, evade the death though, but here comes the counter-attack. Andoryu doesn't have the Wiggy Shadow Kill. Escalera and Kozen will survive. Not at three minutes. There's not enough damage on Kozen to be able to get away with that and to even deal enough damage to kill anyone. But yeah, uh, just to clarify, it's TNC who's doing Omega what Liquid did to Omega just last night. Yeah, yeah. They watched the replay. Again, heads just doing Sanford things yeah. right before the first minute mark was already in the purple buff of Andoryu. So you know how to beat the barangay is to be... Super like, aggressive. Super aggressive, just, like just, TLPH. Just, just get in there. But here's the thing. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And it would be too much to expect a team like Smart Maker to fall for it twice. And now, I think it's safe to say, it's not the same story. Yeah, yeah. Again, three minutes in, four minutes. Second turtle spawning in the lower quarter in about 20 seconds. It's not the same. Omega had a much worse situation against Liquid last night. Yeah, really have a hard time. Especially for Andoryu. Wasn't able to get his... Uh, I, I believe the first three buffs of Andoryu was heavily contested like a Turtle Clash. So this time, Omega also learning from the mistakes of game number two uh, against TLPH. But TNC, again, their snowball potential is high. They have the Nolan. Still 0-0 KDA, but with a proper setup from Escalera, Escalera or a kick from Heads. Give the kills to KZN. TNC can snowball from this. And that's what we've been talking about all weekend long. I think the team that has the easier execution can get results much, much faster. For TNC, it's as simple as you just said. A sacred hammer, a flicker into an implosion, a kick from heads. That's all they need to get going. Omega, though, they got to lay it down from Chaknu. Riyadh's got to get a great wild charge. Perfect lineup for Ukir and then another to finish up. So now check it out. There's a kick. There it is. On to Ryota, he has to flicker out though, survives the clash as TNC works on the turtle. Chakno has to use the glorious pathway, gonna zone out Kazen there. Heads soaking up the damage oh. coming in from... Oh! 
Who's gonna fall down? It's gonna be onto Escalera. Yeah. It's gonna be Andoryu still with the turtle. But a kill for Kazen as he takes down Ryota. That ain't worth it. Omega split him up. And TNC, as aggressive as they were, you can't do that if you're not as focused. Oh! To the top lane though, it's gonna be a 2 on one Andoryu, Andoryu. Watch out, that was fine. He's uh, very elusive, very slippery, yeah. as but, a shinobi that he is. But, but you know, Omega, bef uh, during that turtle fight, they had so much ground control. Apart mm -hmm. from their dual double tank setup, the nightmare response coming in from Ogier forces TNC to just... Uh, they can't hide from the brushes That's right. that Heads and Escalera wants to accomplish. They have better combat vision. And implosion from Escalera. Not worth it. Here comes Chakro to the rescue. Okay, counter engage the two tanks, just making sure that their uh, turrets whoa, not going to be taken down. Chak, 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 Chak. Oh, Kozak commits a blazing duet. Chakno all of a sudden is gone. And what a quick response from TNC. You know what? If they were setting up for a push, I'll tell you it's worth it. But right now, it looks like Omega's ready to defend. Joam is coming to the rescue, and he's going to clear the waves. Wow! Look at Smart Omega. The game IQ that's spread across the map, across the board, led by their captain, Chuck with the Mamba. Impressive work. Again, back to TNC's aggressive start. Gamers of all sorts know. Take yeah. it from strategy games, MOBA games, card games. If you're aggressive and you can't pinpoint focus what that is, you're gonna lose to the team that is better late game. Yeah. So now, I think TNC's prime has passed. They have to play a different way. They can't just keep throwing bodies at Omega. Yeah, because Omega, they, they are, are really master of trades. I do agree with what you said. Even though Chaknu died, the fact that Jome's turrets up top are still intact means that he has more space. He has, still has the space to outplay Kozen and eventually gain more gold compared to the Claude. That's right. And Again, you're not racing against the Claude. You can't do that. Not in the current patch. 1.9.20 has blessed Claude with a proactive curve. His power spike is out of this world. He's like a he's like a high school student with an IQ of a math genius. Uh, with that said, you can't outrace him. But now, he'll, real quick, this is the last hurdle. Spawned up already. Going to the barangay. Another. Oh, oh, hit, oh, hit, hit. Oh, that was a good zone, though, coming in from Shaknu. But here comes Escalera on the back line. And a kick coming in from Heads. But there's no, there's no follow up, though. That's why he's going to be punished. Heads going to fall down. Here comes Kozin with a blazing duet onto Ukir. Still hasn't popped the Dominator's descent. Now, TNC. They had no answer to that trade. I mean, they got an, uh, a turret down bottom, mm -hmm. but heads up play from Chaknu. Just just straight up man-to-man -man defense on Kaze and not letting him sniff even the last turtle. And just as quickly as Omega saw a window of opportunity, they split up. Yeah. They were like, all right, clearly this is our turtle. Joe, go take top lane. Andor, you go clean up down bottom. We were pushing that initially. But now we can reclaim, and suddenly, look at this, TNC's gold lead, nada, kaput. Yeah, even Andoryu just picked up the Sky Piercer. Actually, I think this is the first time again I saw a Sky Piercer. But this time it's going to go on to Hayabusa. He's really confident that he knows he can go to those engages, get the kill without suffering any casualties. And, 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 that's, and that's easy right now for Andoryu, because again, you have two beefy frontliners in Shaknu. And Ryota, and so far, even if Chaknu keeps dying with two deaths, it's all worth it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Chaknu can afford to die if Heads kicks the big horseman. <laughs> that makes Omega a very happy camper. They can keep going. And the fact that his revitalize will just get better and better as the game goes longer, this gives TNC a big budget need. Yeah. Invest in anti-heal. Where is he going to come from? Who's going to buy the Sea Halberd? Who's going to buy the Dominance Ice? Might be Kozin, though. He, he picked up the DHSR, I think, around the six minutes, seven minutes in. So instead of completing the Trinity, he can go straight up Sea Halberd. Halberd. Yep, so he goes Golden Staff, uh, DHS. Corrosion Scythe. Oh, you, you let go of the Corrosion Scythe? Yeah, I, he picked up already the DHS. Well, I guess he's just not going to get the Sea Halberd. <laughs> oh, well, eventually he should. Okay, okay. Because again, it's so hard. You have a revitalized on Chaknu. Ryota, he got away with so much just by flickering away and then coming back while charging. You can't let that happen. Look at this. Grok EXP lane stats. Played four times currently in season 14 and has won three out of four times with a 75% win rate. Man, I'm not I'm not sure that's who that's ridiculous. Who used the, the Grok for as an XP. But one thing for sure is Ryota is rocking the Grok up to perfection almost. Look at that. Just really zoning out TNC.
gaining ground control. It's easy for Omega for every single neutral objective. And talk about picking the right tool for the right job. Look at TNC, Escalera, Heads, Lancey, to some extent Kozin, yeah. besides Gage. All of them have to walk. All of them can't just jump to positions. Well, that's why the Grok is so useful, especially coming out of the EXP lane, costing very little. Now Heads living inside the pit. Slight advantage to Omega. Joe Minandoriu hitting away. Escalera. Down to a fourth of its health. Escalera, look at this angle. Here comes the kick. Escalera, though, going for the back line. Here comes Joe with his arm in force. Kozin has to use the blazing do it. Escalera just working on Andoriu, but Andoriu still gets the Lord. Kozin has to walk away. Escalera. And Escalera suffering the Dominator's descent coming in from Okir. And there's the trade. Romer for Romer. Escalera for Chaknu, but Omega secures the Lord. Well set by Smart Omega. What did I tell you, Jose? What did I tell you? If Chaklu dies, that's okay. He did his job. Smart Omega leaned hard into it. What Joshua Mangilog bought for Omega was a clear path to the retribution. Yeah. And throughout that whole debacle, Joe could have really leaned into it, but no, they were focused. Again, this is the mark of a great team, yeah. a championship team in the making. Clear communications, a one-track mind. I think they were all saying, no, 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 Lord first, Lord first, in Tagalog, of course, but Lord first. Look at Endor, you're just really flexing right now. Their gold lead as he commits the Uigi Shadow Kill on to four. He doesn't care. He doesn't care at this point. And now Omega has the Lord up top. 1v1 Kozen. between Kozen and Andoryu. Blazing Duet is there. Off cam kill! Does he have a quad shadow? Will he go for it? Off cam oh kill. No. Escalera's gonna fall down, but this time here comes Kazen. It's gonna be a 1v1 for the junglers. Oh. And the fracture will secure the kill onto Andoryu. Kozen softened him up for Kazen to finish the job. All this while, the push up top. All right, you know what? For once. In the mid game, the post power spike. TNC actually won a trade. Yeah, finally. But this time, what? Omega answers that right back. Not so fast. Okay, but TNC answers also as they take down the turret down bottom. And now, TNC, this is what I like about TNC this time. They're making, they're not just playing as passive compared to their previous series. This time, they're making sure that they have to force a trade, and they are getting those trades. Okay, Escalera falls down. Great. But Kazen was able to split push, and even they have the, the lead in terms of turrets down bottom. Yep, and again, Andoryu dying prior actually reset the stacks building up on the Skypiercer. Sky yeah. So already, I think it's a one and a half worth of value victory for TNC in the trade. Now Smart Omega with a very small 200, 300 gold lead approaching a 13 minute mark. TNC can still count their blessings. Kazen getting his purple, the map not being as blue. And them getting some semblance of vision. Again, you talked about how uh, Ukir are able to clear bushes. Luckily, TNC has a way to do just the same. Throw a sacred, no, the first skill yeah. into a bush. Check, right? Lancey, throw out your skills. Nuke it. Check. And the fact that Kozen is rocking to Purify mm -hmm. also is another way for Omega to add layers <laughs> to their setup. So it's not as simple to catch TNC. That's why that moment down bottom happened. It's because... Omega have to choose their fights now. And yeah. this is a great way for TNC to actually recover, to put on the clutch. It's not just blind rage, just aggression. Now they can finesse into better engages. Yeah. But TNC, again, execution really needs to be pinpoint here. We've seen a lot of times this head starts things off with a good way of the dragon. And then Escalera goes to the back line with the implosion play. But the, the problem is their damage dealers get zoned out by Chaknu and That's Ryota. Right. That's right. So now... They have to do more than that. They have to flip the switch. Maybe implosion first and then isolate with the kick. Yeah. But it's not going to happen if you don't clear this bush. Look at this amazing, this immaculate river bush control by Smart Omega. Now up by about a thousand gold. This does help though. The uh, Athena shield on Escalera. He's not going to get easily bursted down by Ukir. Yeah. And can actually stand up against Chaknu and Jome. Yeah. He can actually go for the late implosions even if his HP bar is almost non existent. So this time TNC, Escalera. Heads oh, needs a good pickup. Kozen goes in with a BMI and Blazing Duet just to clear out the minions. And now Omega knows that a major resource has been expended. That's going to be the Purify of Kozen coming into this Lord fight. Ooh, he did pull out a Zaman Force too. Was able to lifesteal away from that wave. Sure, he can stay in, but without a Purify and waiting on the Blazing Duet, it's going to be tough for TNC to actually contest. Lord here approaching half health. 
There's the reset. Which one am I going? Ahads gets a kick! Here comes the kick! But no reinforcements from the Phoenix Army as Escalera and Kazan are down bottom. <gasps> Looking for the angle though. I can feel the frustration brewing. Oh no, they're gonna get sandwiched here. Four members, five members. They there know is. Glorious Pathway plus Wild Charge to bring down Kozen without the Purify. Now Escalera soaking up the damage. Implosion just to delay. Kazan on the other hand. What is he gonna do? He's gonna get the 1v1 up to Andorio. Sure, 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 sure. But the Wiggy Shadow Kill is just gonna burst him down. And all of a sudden, the birthday boy is lonely on his big day. He's alone. A singular catch leading to a Jenga-like down spiral for TNC. A free objective, an eminent wipeout. Look at Smart Omega knocking down their base. That, that was such an aesthetic scene. Zaman Force and uh, the Glorious Pathway just connecting, making sure that they burst down the inhibitor even before the Lord marches into their base. This could be endable for the Barangay. Again, one step closer, one more shot to securing a playoff spot. Here comes the Lord. It's an enhanced Lord. TNT have time to deal with it. But Omega will work on setting up the inevitable. They're sinking up the waves down bottom, sinking up the waves up top, and allowing TNC a moment to breathe. Ingan, the tables have turned. Earlier it was TNC who had the easier execution, now it's Omega. They have so many AOE CCs, so many ways to activate their lineup. And TNC, they can only hope for a big kick or a miracle implosion. Yeah. That's how they start up the fight, that's how they answer back and inside their base too. Escalera though has the flicker, so again, they can commit the Flicker Implosion play. But the problem is the sustain from Omega is just too much. Even Shaknu still has the Revitalize because the Purifies are up for Jome and Ukir. And the problem is for TNC, Omega's uh, casting of skills, it doesn't even need to be pinpoint accurate. Just the fact that you, you can uh, cast the Glorious Pathway like this as he cuts off. The pathway of heads there oh, brings him see. down. Shome working on the birthday boy. Three members left to defend for TNC. They have minions onto the bottom lane and no more inhibitor turrets left. Matter of time, Escalera oh. sets, but he's not going to catch anyone as they take him down. So Kozen working on the minions and Doryu focuses on the crystal. Shome wants to bring someone down as well. And Omega will get a game one win. The Barangay weathered through the storm, stuck it through a tough early to mid-game ramp, and eventually found themselves in a position wherein the margin of error was so big mm -hmm. that you're right, they don't need to aim their skills. They just need to point it in the general direction and the rest follow.